What is up, YouTube? It's NYK31. What's going on out there? Jackson Got a couple of videos coming at you this off. evening. This one is I'm taking up my Jets against the Eagles. We know what that means. That means Vic. That means containing Mike Vic. The Eagles are one of the teams in Madden. There's a couple of teams in Madden that you have to you know, really be on your toes against when you're playing against them online. And, you know, Philly's one of them. And... Whenever I play against the Eagles, I pretty much make up my mind that I'm not going to allow Vic to scramble, and I'm not going to allow Deshaun Jackson to here. get anything deep. Get That's pretty much my MO. If I'm going to lose the Eagles, I'm going to lose because Deshaun McCoy sort of beats me. Simple as that. that you want. So, with the Eagles, I try to get as much speed on my defensive line as I can. You know, I have Jason Taylor and Calvin Pace at the ends as usual. But I take out Chris Jenkins, and I still have Sean Ellis at defensive tackle, but I dust off Mr. Bust himself, my fourth string defensive end, Vernon Golston. And all I do with Golston is he is my designated Vic spy. Basically, I'm going to camp him out right in the middle of the field, and I'm going to say, hey, if you want to run the football, run it, but I'm not going to let you scramble. And, of course, I'm playing my Tampa 2 style, my, you know, bend but don't break style of D. Yeah, that's what and this is what I don't understand about some people who play Madden. The guy sees that I'm not going to let him you know, trick around with Vic, and I'm all but Ops daring the draw. guy to run the football, and he Trey never Price runs it. Was there to bring him down. You know, people are just so conditioned to throw first and throw second and throw, throw, throw in that and that. The, the guy doesn't recognize that I'm saying, hey, run Eight the acres. football. You know, he just wants to throw, and if he wants to throw for four-yard so games all game, like go right ahead, be my guest. Because he's not going to get anything deep. But, anyway. I actually like Vic. I don't have a problem with Mike Vic. The half back with the carry. Madden makes some people hate Vic. <laughs> the the things that he can do Jordan in the game. And he's a start. handful in the game against somebody who has a brain, but... Dumps you know, right. Vic's a guy who's a handful to deal with in the NFL now I mean the Jets are doing a pretty good job in the passing the guy has become a more complete player and I think I think prison changed Vic I think prison made Vic grow up a little bit you know prior to Vic getting into his mess and we all know what that was about I mean you can't have a conversation with someone without Vic without that coming up and you know, I don't hold him, I don't hold any animosity towards Vic for that. I mean, the, Jets, the guy committed a crime. Nice it was against the, the law. Like he was found guilty. He was punished. He served his sentence. He never complained. And now I just view him as a guy who's free to make a living and free they to move on with his life. You know? Like the, way the way I feel about this situation is basically like this. I live in Orlando, Florida. And, you know, we just went through going through the whole Casey Anthony soap opera and how, down, you know, she got acquitted for um, you know, the death of her daughter. Now, I'm a heck of a lot more outraged about a mother getting away with killing her child than I am with what Vic did to dogs. I'm sorry, that's the way it is. Second you know, I equate crimes against human life, pass. you know, to be much more heinous than crimes against animals. Well, that's neither here or there, but the bottom line is, it's a pass. in our respect of him, he and he's took his lumps, he served his sentence, Jeremy and on the receiving he's in a situation and where he has weapons, and he has a good offensive-minded head coach, and he's made himself into a more complete player. You know, when you talk about quarterbacks in the league, you now have to talk about him, you know, in the top half dozen or so quarterbacks in the league and before you, know, you couldn't really say that about the guy before I used to think of him as a guy who you know got by on his athleticism his Passes rocket arm his speed 
He was a guy who could win you 9 to 10 games a year. He got to an NFC Championship game once, but eventually you'll face a team in the playoffs that can take away his legs and he didn't have the wherewithal or the weapons to make you pay in other ways, but now he does. And you gotta take your hat off of that. The guy worked on his craft and has become a much more polished, you know, quarterback. Here's the you know, as far as quarterbacks go, you have to make a you have Peyton Manning and Tom Brady at the top. You know, those are one and two. They pretty much have to really be, you know, until they dramatically slip off or they retire. You know, I happen to put uh, Peyton Manning number one. I think the guy is the best quarterback in the league. And he happens to be my favorite player in the league, by coincidence. <laughs> but I think that guy is just an all-timer. He's just a great, good. great quarterback. Just a perfect player. David Aker. And in everything that you would want a prototypical quarterback game. to be, he embodies. I think the guy is wonderful. And, you know, of course you have That's Tom Brady right and all the championships that he has won and all he the intangibles you know, that he down. possesses. And he has better physical skills than people give him credit for also. And another guy who I really like, I really like Philip Rivers. You know, my personal top QB in NFL list as of right now, I would go Peyton number one, Brady two, then I'd go Rivers. Rivers, I love the way he competes. I love his, you know, skill set. I love his intangibles. I love that he plays hurt. I like the moxie that he has, the swagger that he plays with. He reminds me a lot of you know, Dan Marino, you know, from his quick release, you know, to the way he, you know, plays with a certain it's arrogance. I really like the way Philip Rivers goes at it. And then you have, so the now, the Jets, you know, Drew Brees. Three, you know, he's Eagles, a stalwart, six. you know, one of the top, time to take you know, five or six quarterbacks in the league. Pretty. And then you have, you know, Aaron Rodgers. I don't put Aaron Rodgers higher than maybe, you know, fourth or fifth right there with Brees because... You know, one, I think, you know, he needs to show that he can play at this level for a more sustainable period of time. And also, I think Aaron Rodgers is just going to be getting better. I think he's just ascending, and he's going to be the next guy in line, you know, once Peyton and Brady begin to exit and start to get older. I think that he's going to be the, the next, you know, flagship quarterback of the, the league. Ball, the I think that guy is going to be a special, and special the player with a very be, conservative you know, great for a long period of time. Allowing them to get open. Not really a big Ben fan, not really an Eli Manning fan. And then you have, you know, guys like Matt Schaub, who's a good player who doesn't really get the exposure because his team underachieves. You have Matty Ice in Atlanta, Flacco, guys like that. He gets off the throw. And, you know, the guy who I haven't mentioned is Mr. 17. Sanchez. Mark Sanchez, my quarterback. And, you know, truth Hands be told, I'm not really sold on Sanchez Touchdown. yet. J -E -T -S. Jets, Jets, you know, here's the thing about Sanchez. You know, most young quarterbacks that become something... There's something noticeable about them right away that just kind of grabs you and you notice. You know, with Sam Bradford, it's, his, it's the way he's, you know, so polished and well-schooled. With um, Matt Ryan, it's his intangibles and his accuracy. Joe Flacco, you know, it's his arm strength. The thing that bothers me about Sanchez is that we're three years in. And I say we being, you know, the Jets and Jets fans. And, you know, what does Mark Sanchez really do well? You know? What really sticks out about him? Is he a great leader? You know, not really. He isn't showing any great leadership skills. Harris picked! Does he have a great arm? His arm is okay. It's really above average. Just when you Does he have you know, stellar accuracy? It's, he's, a, he's got average a pick, accuracy from what I've seen. Nothing special. He's an okay athlete. He's got good feet. He's got good legs. He's got decent pocket he's presence. That's the thing. Everything that you list about a quarterback, you can't say he's any better than decent at. And to me, that doesn't that doesn't really spell out, you know, franchise quarterback. I'd be if I'm a fan of a team. If I'm, a, if I'm a fan of the Bucks. Would, would a Bucks fan trade Josh Freeman's upside for 
uh, Mark Sanchez is. I wouldn't. You know? Would you trade Sam Bradford's upside for Sanchez's? I wouldn't. So, you know, sooner or later, if the Jets are going to be what the Jets want to be, I mean, we got to find out if, you know, Sanchez is the kind of quarterback that can, you know, carry the load. I mean, even a guy like Eli, who I'm not a big fan of, you know, Eli's won a Super Bowl. He's shown that he can play under pressure and that he can make things happen. And we haven't seen Sanchez, you know, in those spots. If anything, the Jets try to protect him. And, you know, that's also worrisome. You know, he should be at a stage now where... We're starting to see him open up, but I guess we'll see this year. But that's my take on, you know, Vic and quarterbacks and whatnot. Love to hear what you guys think. Take care. Peace. More videos coming soon. That'll wrap it up from Philadelphia. The game's top highlights are next. Here's one for the highlight reel. It's the Doritos Crunch Time play of the game. Our final in this one is the Jets, 10, the Eagles, 6.